Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the GW Panther Geschutzwagen Panther, the Tier 7 German SPG. It's located on the north spawn of Muravanka, and this one is under the command of Red Dog Alpha 1. Now, this RT didn't actually get built. They were going to build a prototype, but they cancelled it before it was actually put into production. They wanted more Panther tanks, so they couldn't spare any hulls for the RT. Plus, of course, it's very likely that uh, the German army, or the, not the Bundeswehr as it was then, no, it was the, um, uh, was the Waffenland, the uh, purchasing organization, decided they'd be much better off with more Hummels because they could easily build the uh, Panther, Panzer IV, and therefore, of course, that was the hull being used mainly for the Hummels. Okay, we've got a 15 centimeter howitzer, which is capable of 600 alpha penetrating 39 millimeters of armor. This RT is not particularly fast, but that's actually down to the fact that it doesn't have as much horsepower in the games it did or would have had in real life. You see, what Wargaming have done is they've only given this one 370 horsepower instead of the 740 you find on the standard tier seven Panther. And that's kind of sad, really, because you think that the uh, the Germans would actually take a standard Panther hull with a standard Panther engine, a Maybach engine, and they would put the uh, the turbocharger on, which would bring the power up from 370 to 740. But, well, Wargaming needs to make the RT slow, and therefore that's what they've done. Another slow thing, or very bad thing actually, is the uh, hit points for this vehicle is much, much less than uh, than the uh, standard Panther. Standard Panther's got 1,300 hit points. This thing has only got 306. That was a direct hit. He just got a direct hit on the FB there. He's looking around for more targets in the forest, but... Oh, there's one over on the far side, but he's behind the house at the moment. Now, the good thing about this RT is it does have a reasonably fast reload. The standard reload, 25.39 to 8.9. But this one is just over 20 seconds, so he's very fast on the reload. Trying to get that T-150. Unfortunately, they're coming up that side with virtually no opposition except an Oni and a Nashorn. Okay, AMX 12 ton. He's almost loaded. This should be fun. That thing's very got very thin armor. And now he's out the game. That was a penetrating shot that took out the AMX 12 ton. So good shooting. He had it steady and accurate, and he got the kill. Now this uh, this actual vehicle was going to be originally known as the Gorilla 12-5, and it was going to have a 128mm gun instead of the 15cm howitzer. It was going to have a, a 5 crew minimum, uh, and that actually makes transfers difficult if you're going to have um, uh, transfer the crew from other RTs into this one. It has good accuracy, as you just saw. It's got a fairly wide arc as well, because it's got 26 degrees either side of the center line. Oh, he got a kill! A second kill. The Jagdpanzer Pier went down there. He got a direct hit. He was badly damaged after a shot that came in, and so he's claimed his second kill, which is very good. Okay, that AMD, though, is being a bit of a nuisance. He's scouting. Can we get a shot in? Line it up ahead. Looks good. Unfortunately, it was just a little too early but it was along the right lines. He was thinking correctly where to put the shell. Occasionally, you have to think ahead of where the enemy's gonna be and place the shell there in the hope that the enemy does go straight through it. So they didn't build any prototypes for this, Arty, but uh, it was supposed to have at least one. They did make models though, wooden models, and you know the Germans were very good at making toys. Um, oh, there goes the AMD. That's good. Good shot by the E25. So they made one model to actually show Hitler what it would actually look like, but they just needed more Panther tanks, and that's why none of them were ever built, which is a great pity, I think. 
They had all the signs and everything. Wasn't as if that was a problem. Just lack the material to go ahead and build it. It was 1943 after all, and Germany was starting to lose the war by then uh, in a big way. Mostly in uh, the Soviet Union and in the desert as well. Okay, Dickamax, very slow, lines up, rounds out, and oh, another kill! Beautiful! Right into his rear, he's got virtually no armor, and he put that shell just where it would do the worst. Right into the cockpit of the Dickamax, and finished him off. Okay, we've got an easy eight now, we're not loaded. Oh, he gets killed before we can do it, but he probably would have got a kill there. And he's found another tank with very thin armor, the Scorpion. He's not dialed in, but he fires in. Oh, RNG says no, and that one went short. That was very, very uh, annoying because that little tank destroyer, the German Tier 7 Premium, well, oh, it's an American Tier 7 Premium, I should say, has only one millimeter of armor, which means he's very vulnerable if he gets hit by an arty round. Okay, we just lost our T25 AT, and there's the E25 now. We've got a few teammates in between us and him for the moment, so we don't have to move just yet. But uh, he is headed this way, and he's being followed by a T3485M. He can do something about them. Oh, he aimed it behind on the off chance that that guy was actually going to back up, and he didn't. But he's sticking it around. Use the tree. Yep, that's good. It's more cover. Stops the E25 from seeing us. We lost the Type 64. We can see the E25. He's coming towards us. Stops to take a shot. Here we go. Rounds out. Yes, that's a kill. That's four kills now. He's having a really good game, Red Dog Alpha 1. Okay, so it's quietened down, but that T3485M is still out there on minimal hit points. We're equal on scores with the enemy. Both got five tanks apiece. The SU-152 just moved. Oh, but he didn't move enough. And that shell, unfortunately, didn't do anything. Now, our SU-152 has actually come back and he's alongside us, or was alongside us. Red Dog Alpha once decided it's probably wiser for him to actually make a move. Give himself a little buffer between him and the enemy. So that if the enemy does get spotted by the SU-152, he's got some distance to play with before he gets spotted as well. Plus, he's got to open the distance because, of course, the SU-152 is going to spot the enemy before he does. He's only got 275 millimeters of uh, view range. So he needs that SU-152 to, to do his spotting job. That's it. He's moving into the corner, which would be much better for him. In fact, actually, I'd say move south now. That's it. He's doing it. Follow the other tanks because you've got them for protection. Plus, of course, it does open the range on that T-3485M. Unfortunately, that only is very low on hit points. He's a one-shot for the enemy RT who happens to be an M12. Okay. I notice Red Dog Alpha 1 is scrolling out his mouse to his aim point. You can actually use that little trick, which we've all learned, which is to press down your control key, move your mouse um, cursor over the minimap and right click on the spot you want to see and it'll take the view there straight away. It's a little trick that RT players have handed down to other RT players over the years. It's very effective and enables you to get sight of the enemy very, very quickly. Okay, he's looking ahead of where our teammate down there is looking. It's the E25 who's sitting in the wood having a look. Can't see the enemy, but I wouldn't be surprised if the enemy is actually waiting in ambush. Now they've got a 45 TP, an M2Y, the M12, and the T3485M. The M12 is probably down on the east side of the map. Okay, the Oni is moving up. He's looking ahead of where the Oni will see. That's another thing. You should always try, if you've got a teammate moving ahead, look ahead of where they're going to be seeing 
So you're actually seeing within their spotting range. So you don't actually look at what they're doing directly, but what they're seeing directly. And that will mean your, your aim should be dialed in on the spot they're seeing. So the moment it pops up into view, you're already dialed in on that spot. He's decided to move south. Good decision. He found one. There's the, uh, it's the heavy tank, the M2. Oh, I think we said the 45 TB. I think it's the 45 TP. Yeah, there you go. And again, he had to scroll out, you see. But unfortunately, the E25 and the enemy team just killed our, or well, actually, are the E25 just killed their M2Y. There's the 45 TP's moved. Okay, unfortunately, that shell didn't get anything. So we're going to have to reload. It's seven seconds. Come on. We need the E25 to acquire him again. The SU-152 is protecting our cap at the moment. That's the reason he hasn't moved out of his position. Oh, but he is moving now. He's trying to come down the east side of the map. He might unfortunately stumble upon the T-3485M who might finish him off. 85 millimeter round can go through the armor of an SU-152. So oh, that's a little dangerous thing for the SU-152 to move down. Okay, I approve of this though. Using the P in SPG to actually propel yourself towards the enemy cap. Get closer to the enemy. Red Dog's indicating where he thinks they are. And well, the Oni also indicated where he thinks the enemy is as well. Oh, right, okay, the SU-152's gone past the point where he last saw the T-3485M, and he's not there. Okay, this is good. Three minutes left to go, and the E-25 starts capping. Oh, that's a bit of a problem. The E-25 doesn't have great armor. If he's spotted, he could be attacked. And remember, the enemy team does have... That 45 TP who's got considerable power. Okay, somewhere over there. Look where the where your teammates are looking, not at where your teammates are. Okay, he's hiding behind the bush. That's why he's using the bush for bush mechanic. So the 45 TP is gonna have to get closer if he wants to spot that E25, but he might try to guess where he is. He might think that he's actually... Oh, dear. We just lost the only 45 TP was the one who got him. Now, will he tell us where he thinks... Oh, he thinks he's in the bushes at the back. And we just saw the tracer from the enemy RT. He's way down in the south, on the southeast corner. The M12's down there on the water's edge. The SU-152 is probably going to find him, but the only is indicating where he thinks the uh, 45 TP is. He's just in those bushes there. And the T-3485M's just been spotted. He's a one-shot kill. Okay, we're hastily dialing in because we don't want to fire in and lose the shell. Rounds out. Well, we don't know if that stunned the T-34, but it didn't kill him. And the E-25's left the cap. He's hunting now. And the M-12's been found. The SU-152 should make mincemeat for him. Oh, he fired but missed. We're dialing in. And the SU-152 just took a big shotgun, refire in, and, well, we stunned the M-12, but we also stunned our teammate in the SU-152. And the M-12 is now headed towards the water. I don't think he's going to try and drown himself. I think he's more just trying to turn. He's got a terrible turning circle. And the T-3485M is capped by the E-25. We fire around in at the M-12. Get a nice little hit, bit of stun. You do get good stun with the uh, GW Panther. And the E25 kills him off. That means there's only the 45 TP left. And we think he's behind the cap in the tree line. There he is. And we're almost loaded. Go for it. Bounce out. Nice hit. Solid hit. 284. He did get a critical hit. It may have been the tracks, but... He's being finished off by the E25 now. Oh, we lose the SU-152, but the E25, are you going to do the honors? Or are we? 
Go for the kill. Ready? Ramps out straight away. Oh, the E25 takes the kill. So Red Dog Alpha 1 just misses out on getting his fifth kill. But it is a victory. Here's the end of battle results. And that was the first class tanker for Red Dog Alpha 1 in the GW Panther. He got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four. He would have had five. But for the E25 finishing off that 45 TP right at the end of the game. He also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this game. He got 11. And he also got a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. You can see that in the sheer number of enemy targets that he did hit. Spread the RT love around as many enemy tanks as you can and you pick up a medal. And when you pick up a medal, even if you lose the game, you get bonus. So it is worth getting that confederate medal. And of course, it lets your teammates know that you are trying to hit as many of the enemies as you can to try and help them get the kills on the enemy. 3,511 was the win eight from that one. That was a decent score at Super Unicum level. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in this game. That actually went to the 45 TP on the enemy team. He picked up 2,729 hit points and he did get the high caliber. So he got 20% of the enemy hit pool. When it came to the second place, it was actually the enemy E25. He got 2,692. And the third highest on damage was our E25, who actually got the final kill of the game. He got a top gun and 2,601 hit points. And we can see the next highest score after that, the fourth highest score, actually goes to Red Dog Alpha 1. He picked up 2,170 hit points, which is a decent score uh, and a very nice game. Let's have a look at kills. Well, again, it's the E25 with seven kills in this game. Just one short of getting a Radley Waters. Uh, he could have let us get that last kill, but no, he wanted it. He got it and it finished the game. And you can see second highest scorer at Red Dog Alpha 1 with four. Three kills went to the enemy E25 and their T3485M. When it came to base XP, it's the E25. He did 1,330. So I suspect he was doing a bit of spotting as well as actual damage. 1,458 of spotting, actually. So, yeah, that was very helpful to him. And he did get a very high win eight score. So he knew how to handle the E25 correctly. Uh, yeah, sad that it's one short of a Radley Waters. That would have been nice for him. But uh, uh, 894 went to the uh, uh, to Red Dog Alpha 1. Uh, 828 went to the Oni. And 823 went to the Nashorn. The Oni managed to pick up a patrol duty. The Nashorn also got a Confederate. So he did well. 20 shots fired by Red Dog Alpha 1. Six direct hits on the enemy, two penetrations. Now, which other ones did he penetrate in that game? We know that was one of them that he got a decent shot on was the AMX 12 ton. Yeah, look at that. 416 hit points, one penetrating shot onto the side of the vehicle. Um, I suspect it was the Dickamax. Yes, yes, Dickamax. 396 hit points, one penetration. Again, minimal armor. If you look for tanks as an RT that have minimal armor, um, light tanks, uh, tank destroyers, or uh, an SPG for that matter, you will nearly always get a penetrating shot if you can get it directly on target because the shell will just go straight through. The armor is only really there to uh, uh, protect them against bullets and uh, shell splinters. It's not designed to stop a shell actually hitting the target and going right through it. So, uh, yes, there's something to bear in mind when you're actually selecting a target. If you see two tanks, one of them's got thin armor, the other one's got thick armor, leave the thick armor one alone, go for the one with thin armor, because you'll probably knock it out altogether with one click on him. Uh, let's have a look at the rest of the detailed. 12 splashes on the enemy as well, 2,170 hit points, all a bit at more than 300 meters. He did receive one hit by way of splash damage in the game, so it wasn't totally without uh, incident, but uh, he didn't uh, lose anything out of it. Uh, no no uh, hull damage at all, it was just a stun. Ten enemy vehicles were attacked, four were killed, so there's a six difference to the Confederate. 655 hit points of stun assist off nine stuns. He earned 38,909 credits from the game, 22,400 for ammunition, and took away 16,509, 1,341 XP, 2,682 for completing a mission, and 4,023 experience points altogether. So a very good game indeed, and 
Well, it's uh, it's sad that he didn't get the five kills because he would have got it with that last shot. It was going to be splashing the enemy, but it would have taken him out of the game. I'm pretty sure of that at the end. But the E25 wanted his uh, seventh kill, so he got it. So that's the first battle. Yep, we've got a two replay uh, video here. And uh, after all, this is the 7,999th video. Uh, so let's have a look at the second battle. And again, it's Red Dog Alpha 1 in the GW Panther. Okay, we're on the north spawn of Cliff. And battle's underway. Now, rather jokingly, actually, um, the GW Panther became known as Dracula because it's got kind of shields, gun shields, around the actual turret at the back of the vehicle. And that made it look like Dracula with his cloak. And, well, I think some of you may actually know that we had a uh, little skin made up. Well, it wasn't made by us. It was actually made by Tane, uh, Sir Tane, or Sir Rusty as he became known. And he actually very nicely made up a Dracula skin, which is available. I'm pretty sure we can supply it to you if you want it. And you can use that to actually uh, change your GW Panther into a Dracula. It's uh, black with fangs, and it's got the red cloak on the inside of the gun shield. First target is a Firefly. Just a fraction too late, but he did get 80 hit points of splash. Now, despite the fact that he's using the same position that many people actually use, you can actually uh, change position. Most people forget to do that. And, well, if you don't move, you can get counter-batteried off this spot. Fires ahead of the firefly. Oh, that was so close. So I don't think it hit, but I think it would have splashed the firefly for sure. Because remember, it's only a, a Sherman, an M4, with a 17-pounder gun. So relatively thin armor. Again, we see Red Dog Alpha 1 scrolling out his aim. Again, use the control button, hold that down, then move the cursor over the minimap and right click. Use the right hand mouse button and the view will go straight to the spot you want to see. And it's really quick and very effective. And the thing was that that original idea of how to do that was shared amongst RT viewers. Uh, it was actually... Uh, it was actually a What RT News member who actually provided the, uh, provided me with the uh, way to actually do it. Well, it's a bit of splash there on the Crusader, and he's got some stun assist. Yes, if I remember correctly, it was Captain Ashstorm. One of our best players who's not playing arty so much nowadays but he does play other tanks and he was the gentleman who actually gave me the uh, uh the technique or told me how to do it and from then on i've been passing it on to other people as well it's so efficient lovely shot right into his rear <coughs> excuse me 271 hit points <coughs> excuse me about that Eight in the Western Pass. It's being held there at the moment. We've got tanks in the general vicinity, but we just lost our Cromwell B to their M12. So we know where their, their M12 is uh, focusing. He's probably in the corner, but we're not doing counter battery at the moment. We're trying to hit these tanks. The Leo is a one shot. We're loaded. Now I think he's probably going to go over the cliff at the edge. He is. Now go for it, hit him, dance out, that's a kill. Lovely, now change position. Oh, enemy KV-3 just spotted up at the center. Like he's not the only one up there. Their KV-3 at the moment is um, being fired on by our tank destroyer, the Dickamax. Now if we can put a round in there, we'll hit the object 244, lined up. Rounds out, direct hit on his turret for 197. And the other RT, the FB304, also put a round in there. So we've got some stun assist, even if uh, 
we didn't, didn't actually see the exact amount of damage that was done. KV-3's turned around. He's actually firing the opposite direction now. He's trying to stop our T-150 and our M-2Y from getting shots. In the meantime, we're looking over the Western Pass. Got a King Tiger captured. Now will be a good time to hit him. Bounce out. Direct hit right on his front for 255. And we got some stun assist. That's good. Already up to 1,180 damage. 924 on stun assist. Oh, we're picking up more. Okay, almost ready to go. We can probably hit the 88 now as well. But we're going for the capture first. Bounce out. Oh, kill shot. So that's his second kill of the game. So Red Dog Alpha 1's having a much better game, but then his team is actually doing rather well as well because we're two up on the enemy at the moment. And that's a shot from the FV304 coming in to harass that 88. And he's somewhere in there. Can't see him. Oh, now we can. The Sturry Mills, I think, the one who spotted him. Also, the P43. Oh, it hit the wreck. The shell went long, hit the wreck, but it still splashed the 88 from behind. Okay, we just need our teammates to uh, tell us where the enemy is. We're looking now up in the, uh, the sniper's nest. Go for the T-25 too. I'd hit the Hellcat, really, because you're more likely going to get a kill on him. Well, he splashes the T-25 too and stuns the Hellcat. Now, the Hellcat's got very thin armor. As I've said earlier in the video, if you hit a tank with very thin armor, the shell's got a very good chance of actually going through. Uh, oh, look at that Hellcat. He's really going over the edge. T-25-2 has slightly better armor. He get an, he'd get another hit, but again, prioritize the tanks that you can definitely damage heavily. The t 252 has been killed. The dicamax has got him. The Digimax moved up to the center line. And now we've just got an AMX AC-46. He has got armor, so we need to get a shell in on him. Rounds out. Nice, 204. We lost our T-25AT. And the AMX AC, oh yes, the Sturmil gets him. So he's out the game. Actually, it wasn't Stuart Mill who got him. But anyway, <laughs> Stuart Mill did actually kill one of the enemy vehicles. Um, I think it was actually the Dickamax that got him in the end. Okay, the FB304 has actually moved up to the center lines, firing with his teammates up there. We're still sticking at the back because the GW Panther will fire over the entire range of the battlefield. Now, the Hellcat is up there still. I think he'll be behind those bushes trying to spot our team as they come out into view. So I wouldn't aim there. I'd aim behind the bushes a little further up. Okay, the FP-304 just fired in on the bushes. We could go forward. Hopefully he'll actually do that. Relocate from this position, get closer to the enemy. Okay, Dickamax has been found. Again, thin armor, but we... Oh, we lost the Sturmil in this case. Okay, can you get the shot on the Dick Max? Remember, thin armor. If you hit it, it will do damage. Oh, we did! He got a direct hit. So that's probably earned him a uh, penetrating shot. And it could be somewhere in the region of 600 hit points with one round. Now, he's guarding the cap at the moment, but uh, the numbers are now even. They've still got two RTs. We've got two RTs. They've got a light tank, which is the, um, what have they got? Actually, no, they haven't got a light tank. They've got two tank destroyers, the Dickamax and the Hellcat. Both have got thin armor. Oh, I just heard something being destroyed. And it sounds like the Dickamax is actually moving forward, heading this way. So be prepared, because the Wizzy 131 on our team might actually spot the enemy Dickamax moving forward. I think he did knock down a... a, a uh, yes, he is. There he is. He's moving. 
In fact, he's going up onto the donut to try and knock out our Wizzy 131 and FB304. So wait for it, line it up. Here we go. That's out. Nice direct hit, but not a pen. It hit the tracks, but the Wizzy 131 finishes him off and we get the stun. So that was a good play. 2,000 hit points now, over 2,000. 1,600 assist. The enemy are really being punished here. Remember that Hellcat's still up there somewhere. He kind of moved out without us spotting him. Okay, I still think he's up behind those bushes, not, not down low. The thing about being lower is you've got that gun elevation problem on the Hellcat. You can't, if you go lower down, you can't elevate the gun enough to hit the targets. The Dickamax is moving in. Yes, he was behind the bushes. There you go. Line him up. Up there, you see, it's flat, so he's got no gun elevation problem. So, lined up. Rounds out. This should stun him at the very least. It does stun him. It splashes him for 41. And there's the kill shot. Comes in from our Bert, the FB304. And now there's only two RTs left. So we might as well just get a little bit closer. The Wizzy 131's going into the corner. Where are you? You're in there somewhere. Come out, come out wherever you are. It's got to be somebody in there. Yes, there he is. There's the M44. Oh, he's gone. That means there's only the M12 left and he has to be behind that rock. It's the most likely spot. So fire a round in. And the Wizzy 131's going into spot. Oh, there he is. Rounds out. Go for the kill. Got him. <laughs> so he gets the winning shot of the game. Here's the end of battle results. And that was an ace tanker game for Red Dog Alpha 1 in the GW Panther. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got more in this game than he did the last one. He got 15 in this one. And he got another confederate proving that he is helping his team to win the battle. And his win eight was 4,749, even higher than last time. Again, super unicum standard and a bit more. Let's look at team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game. That Hellcat on the enemy team picked up a high caliber for 3,107 hit points of damage, whilst Red Dog Alpha 1 picked up the second highest damage in the game with 2,695. So he wasn't too far behind. When it came to kills, it was the Hellcat again with four kills. Three kills went to Red Dog Alpha 1 and to the Dickamax and to the Wizzy 131. All got three kills apiece. So nine kills between them. That's pretty good going. And when it came to base XP, yep, that's Red Dog Alpha 1s. He definitely got it. 1,363 out of that one. 880 went to the M2Y, who only got, uh, you know, under that under 1,000. So um, Red Dog Alpha 1's the only one to get over 1,000. And 784 went to the Dicamax, just beating out by one experience point. It's the Hellcat on the enemy team. Red Dog Alpha 1 fired 19 rounds in this game. You only get 30 rounds of ammunition, so he did burn over half his rounds. But he got nine direct hits on the enemy and one penetration. Now, can we guess which of the penetrating shots? I think it probably was one of the enemy tanks, sir. Yep, no, there you go. It's the M12, actually, that he got a penetrating shot on right at the end of the game. Direct hit. I thought that he'd actually penetrated the Dickamax. Remember I said earlier in the game we saw a direct hit, but he probably actually hit some hard armor on the Dickamax, such as the front of the vehicle or the tracks, and that's why he didn't get the penetrating shot. There's relatively few spots on the Dickamax which can actually take a direct hit. Uh, the tracks, unfortunately, are one of them. Oh dear. Anyway, at least he did get the hit points off the guy. Uh, 2,695 hit points, all a bit at more than 300 meters. Damaged 12 of the enemy, so and killed three. So there's only three enemy vehicles he didn't touch in the entire game. And 2,170 hit points of stun assist off 16 stuns. So good use of the stun mechanic to actually keep those enemies uh, um, slow and easy to hit for his teammates. On a free-to-play account, he earned 38,025 credits from the game, and after resupply of ammunition, took away a profit of 16,745 credits. 
1,363 base XP times two for the first victory took away 2,726 experience points altogether. So great games by Red Dog Alpha One in the GW Panther. And I saw these ones. I thought, yep, that's definitely got to be the, the video for 7,999 on our channel. Um, yeah, it's it's a good example of how the GW Panther can be very, very efficient. It's not as quick to reload as the M44, although uh, with the nerfs that are coming up for the M44, it actually might be a faster reload than the M44 in the future. But uh, it is a very good RT nonetheless, and it can actually um, shotgun enemy tanks because of that turret. Uh, so on the move, you can actually uh, act as a TD almost, but uh, I think yeah, this, this was a very good example of great GW Panther play. Uh, so congratulations to Red Dog Alpha 1 for being consistent and keeps getting those Confederates. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.